What's up, everybody? David Yak here, here for iHeartRadio's Yakabout, a boomer's GPS guide to life. So if you're familiar with the years 46 to 64, then this is the place you want to be. So put your headphones on, go for a run, and listen as we yak about. Hey, hey, girls and guys, David here for Yak About. So, you know, on this broadcast and podcast, we yak about health, technology, politics, and anything that will help you be better, healthier, and more informed. All right, so we're back in the studio. We haven't been in the studio a long time. I am here with Wayne. How are you doing, Wayne? I'm doing great. How are you, David? All right, so Good. I was thinking about today's show, and I said, you know, it's been so long since we chatted. Um, I thought I'd pick a few topics and see where we can go with it. All right? Sure. So sure. let's see what we'll chat about today. Okay. Okay. We're going to yak about virtual reality, a favorite of ours, and some examples of what's happening that I think is so fascinating that I really wanted to talk about it. And uh, a new one. You'll soon be able to board a plane without a ticket, just with your face. And we'll talk <laughs> about that. It's happening now. So, what else? Oh, we'll talk about on a yak about health segment, we'll talk about how we're all lying to our doctors and what we're lying about, which I thought was really interesting. And also, on a yak about health uh, segment, I've been following a study that's really interesting about how animals self-medicate in this particular instance, how chimpanzees are self-medicating themselves <laughs> when they're sick. So... I think those are the yeah. things we'll talk about. But remember, before we begin, that the show is sponsored in part by New Vision Eye Center. So you got to go see Dr. Minotti, Reinauer, Tate O'Brien, and the rest of that great team. Because Sally, Wayne, and I mm -hmm. wouldn't trust our eyes to anyone else. That's right. And, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting. <laughs> you know, when you're younger, you don't think about it that often. And all of a sudden, you get to a certain age and... You know, you really need to trust the doctors you yes. go to. I mean, you went to them and you, mm -hmm. you know, um, you were having yeah. some problems and they fixed you. And honestly, I think they saved my right eye, you know, new vision. I walked in there and they said, you know, if we don't watch this carefully, we don't take care of this, you know, we could suffer a detached retina. Yeah. And they put me on a plan and boy, it was just all fixed. So and New now, Vision Eye Center, love you. And now we're all good. Now that's, we're all good. That's right. Yeah. So, and we're brought to you by Chef Bill, the personal chef and catering company. His clients on the Barrier Island have been raving about him and how he has made the food experience as unique and individual as the clients themselves. Some call him the caregiving chef. He's available as a personal chef and for catering your events as small as a dinner party and large parties too. So if you ever thought of having a personal chef, call Chef Bill and you can always get him at 772-217-5462. That's 772-217-5462. And as you know, we can't live without sponsors. So if you're interested in sponsoring Yakabout, and be our guest, right? You can get a hold of us at 212-244-6224. So that's the David Yakir Group at 212-244-6224. All right. So, Wayne. Yes. Let's see. Let's talk Here's the about... Topic. Oh, <laughs> virtual reality really yeah. happening. I'm going to tell you something about virtual reality. All right. You start. I was on a virtual reality roller coaster in Copenhagen. Oh, I've been wanting to have do you that. Heard about those? I have. Where it's a regular uh, roller, roller coaster, coaster, but you wear glasses. Yes. And the experience is all in the glass. It is unbelievable. I mean, I didn't know what I was in for. This was a modern new roller coaster at Tivoli Gardens. You know what Tivoli Gardens is? Yes. Okay. You know the history behind it and Disney World and all that? No. I didn't know this either. I, I knew of Tivoli Gardens. So anyway, we go into Tivoli Gardens, and they, you know, start asking us, where are you from? We said, we're from Florida. Oh, yes, Walt Disney was here. Walt Disney was there in 1951. Wow. He went through the park and basically took all of the great concepts and built Disneyland. Tivoli Gardens is like a miniature Disneyland. It's a beautiful park. And now look, 
Walt Disney had some great concepts. He did, oh, yeah. believe me, don't get me wrong. But when you walk into Tivoli Gardens and you see these rides that are like in the Magic Kingdom and Epcot and all these things, except they're sort of miniature, it was unbelievable. This park was uh, created in 1910. It has a wooden roller coaster with a brakeman on it. Wow. Remember the old break? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Anyway, make a long story short. How's that with virtual reality? They built a brand new steel roller coaster, state of the art, and they, if as an additional option, you can buy the virtual reality Samsung goggles. Right. And they do the virtual reality video. That is a strange experience. Yeah, I'm dying to do that, honestly. Yeah. And what's great about that, I mean, in Disney's case, it's interesting you brought it up because, mm-hmm. you know, Disney creates. Like when they build a roller coaster, they create it sort of inside something and they create the whole world that you take the roller coaster in. They don't have to do that anymore. Mm -mm. You only have to put a a headset on (laughs) and the world is created digitally right in front of your eyes. So that's incredible. But there are two different versions of uh, uh, virtual reality that I want to talk about now. So this one has to do with um, sports. So for people who know me, know that there's two sports. Number one sport, nothing really competes with it, is tennis. And, you know, that's why uh, I may talk about the French Open from time to time. But the other one is actually baseball. Baseball is what I grew up with, first with the Brooklyn Dodgers Mm -hmm. before they moved to uh, L.A. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, the Yankees for me. And so what they're actually doing, and this is happening now is that they are going to start broadcasting the games in virtual reality. So Mm. if you have the goggles, and right now it's the Oculus with the Samsung gear that you were talking about, Mm -hmm. same thing, that uh, you will actually be able to experience being in the park Mm. by putting Uh on the headphones. Mm -hmm. So you get really the entire sound of the park, Mm -hmm. right? And you'll be able to just experience. So if you look left, you'll see people sitting, you know, Mm -hmm. at a certain point, you know, in in the stadium, you can watch, but it'll be, it'll, it supposedly is simulating the stadium experience. And that is happening right now. Wow. So that's one thing. Another thing that's happening and this is sort of a mix of our technology and health, right? There's a company called Santa, hmm. and they're one of those uh, digital companies that there's a lot of talk about, you know, about their products. Mm-hmm. Um, and most people have never heard of them because they haven't uh, produced their products yet. But they've got a virtual reality goggles for insomniacs that are coming out in another year and a half, probably early 2018. And they're sleep goggles, right? And it's more than just a mask, right? What Mm -hmm. they're going to do is, let me see if I can get this exactly right. They're going to have simulations, video and audio simulations that trigger patterns in the brain to induce natural sleep cycles, right? That will induce you into deep states of relaxation, to, mm. And they're, it, in their tests, they're saying that people who put them on are asleep within 10 minutes. Now, well, um, what, well, I wonder what the visual is like. I can understand the auditory, you know, how you can play it, certain types of music or rhythms, but what, what are you looking at? Well, to, I'm not even sleep? sure what happens. I mean, you, you're, if, if I was imagining it, and I haven't seen it, usually, mm-hmm. you, you know, I could see photos or demonstrations or, yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. I haven't. But... Imagine you're not sleeping with your eyes open anyway. Right. Your eyes are closed. Okay. But we ha- we do see through our eyelids. Well, you can see light. Well, I that's know right. that because that's why you shouldn't keep a TV on at night. That's right. So what happens if they have figured out like light patterns? It must be light patterns, yeah. That wow. they put in mixed with audio mm-hmm. signals mm-hmm. that induce the brain to go to sleep. Wow. This is what I think is so interesting uh, about this. And... You know, what got my attention, and you've all seen these commercials lately where the uh, some of the drug companies, if you've got a back pain, mm-hmm. you can paste on a little electric yep. thing with yes. the batteries in it and yep. it stimulates the mm-hmm. nerve endings right. to help you with the pain. Or in one case, they have this thing you wrap just below your knee, mm-hmm. and for some reason it sends signals up your spine, right, mm-hmm. to help with pain in the body. Mm-hmm. This is the extraordinary technology future where it's not 
drug related. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're not taking these drugs that mm -hmm. either cause dependence, mm -hmm. you know, like the opioids and things right. like that, that we're actually being able to solve some of our physical problems, right, without mm -hmm. the use of drugs, which have the side effects. And so I find that extraordinarily fa that fascinating. Is, that's fantastic. So that's the sort of in my virtual reality thing. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to go to, are we ready to go for yeah, a break? Yeah, we're I ready figure... for a break here. We can take a break and then let's come back, okay? Per perfect, thanks. Okay. See you in a bit, people. Yep. And we're back. I'm David Yak here. I'm here with Wayne, and you're listening to a Yak About. So, Wayne, here's yeah. the here's the one that sort of I want to feel you out on this one. Sure. Right. So earlier I said we're going to talk about how to get on a plane with just your face and no <laughs> ticket. Yeah. So this is what's happening, and it's again it's happening now. So JetBlue is experimenting. And what they're doing is in order to speed up the process and to free some of the attendants at the gate, mm -hmm. right, they are uh, going to take a picture of your face hmm. as you're walking in. And here's where some people may object and other people will welcome it, depending on how you feel about such things. So as you stand there, you're getting a photo of your face. Mm -hmm. It will go automatically into the CPB, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Office, mm -hmm. right, database of faces. It will match you up and let you on a plane because the data about you is in that database. Yeah. So... Wow, facial recognition. Facial recognition where you'll be able to... Now, that opens up an entirely new discussion, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Because, first of all, on the positive side... I mean, this is the future. When we used to think about the future in science fiction terms, we actually never thought about the negative implications of technology. Mm -hmm. We only thought about the positive implications of technology. And in this case, I mean, it's totally brilliant. You know, you're walking there and there it is. And it says, OK, go, because it takes a picture. You go on. No more need to fuss with printing a boarding pass mm -hmm. or losing a boarding pass or as easy as it's become by putting it on your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't even have to do that. But what does it really mean if they can tell a picture of you and feel safe to let you on the plane, they mm -hmm. must have data about you. <laughs> what data? <laughs> right. What yeah. data do they, do they have? Yeah. You know, and it could be something that's non-threatening to your privacy as... Um, you've traveled on JetBlue for the last 40 times, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. they know who you are. Right. Or it goes into a database and it, that database really does have everything about you. Mm -hmm. um, I've said it many times before, uh, I don't engage in the privacy argument anymore because there is no such thing as privacy. There you go. Right. Uh, and, you know, if to implement any kind of privacy means taking away all these real advances we've made in a technology. Uh, and I know I, for one, have not thought of a way to keep moving forward in technology and making tech, having technology make your life easier and easier at the same time without giving away more and more information right. about you. That's right. Uh, so someday I will have somebody on the show that can make a case <laughs> 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 yeah. for, for it. All right, yeah. so that's um, right now you can do that on JetBlue. Let me just see where JetBlue is actually doing that. It's doing it in, uh, I don't know if I have it down here. It's doing it in about three or four places. Um, I wonder if they're smaller airports just to start with or you know, larger I, airports. But yeah, you're right. That should speed up the process substantially. And what they're saying also, it frees up the ticket takers yep. you know, who are checking on you to actually help people, you know, Move so, through the line so and this help is them not, out. This is not TSA. This is actually the airline doing this. This is yes, JetBlue. Jet, JetBlue. But I'm sure it has to go through you know whatever security protocols protocols yeah. that are mandated on the airlines. I would think so. It has to meet that. But it does go into the da database controlled by the U.S. Customs and Border Protections mm -hmm. uh, Office. Wow. Mm. So we do know it goes there. Yep. All right. So. Here's uh, here's something I thought was so funny. This came out of uh, 
uh, when I was at a, a, a doctor's visit recently, actually a gastroenterologist, mm -hmm. and you know every time you go to a new doctor, you know, in the old days when we were young, you went to one doctor. Yep. You're a doctor, mm -hmm. right? If you had a problem, you know, you go to a hospital. Yep, that's right. <laughs> but otherwise, you go to the doctor. Yep. Right? Well, now, every time you go to a doctor, you're given, what, 20 pages to fill yes, out? Yes, yes. And start all over, <laughs> and right? you start all <laughs> over. So what I've started doing is actually typing up all my information. Mm -hmm. So I, I, my name, my address, my social security number, my health insurance cards, you know, mm -hmm. all that. Yep. This is... My current list of diseases I'm suffering from. <laughs> this is the current list of uh, mm -hmm. of, of medications yeah. <laughs> that I'm taking. And by the way, this is my father's history. Yep. He had these diseases and died yes. of this. This is my mother's history. <laughs> None of my siblings have cancer yet. <laughs> yep. That type of thing. Yep. And I'll type this all up and I'll update it. But one of the things that is interesting is on the questions, I'm... I was as I was submitting this, and the doctor looked at it and said, "You know how hard it is to get anybody to talk to us, right?" I said, "Really?" He goes oh. because people are coming in because they don't feel well. He goes, "The fact is, is that it's so hard for doctors now to help people because they're never telling them the truth." Oh yeah. yeah. So they don't say. Sure. So, knowing me and technology, I went online mm -hmm. and I typed in sort of a query, right? How, uh, what do we lie to doctors about? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? So here's a bunch of things, right? Yep. So the first one, which I think our, tell, our town will really appreciate, is I never binge drink. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and, then it's, and then it has answers. Don't, don't want to tell your doc just how hard you party? Yeah. Binge drinking uh, can throw test results off and send your doctor down the wrong path mm. if you have health problems. Okay. I quit smoking. Mm. This is a big one because I know a lot of smokers who quit the day before they go to the doctor and mm -hmm. say, I walk into the doctor and say, I quit. <laughs> right? Yeah. So the it says here, it may seem like a harmless way to avoid a lecture, but your doctor needs to know if you smoke. It can interfere with certain drugs mm -hmm. and might help explain symptoms you may have, and he may be able to help you kick the habit for good through therapy or medication. Oh, this one I thought was funny. Yeah. I eat mostly kale. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right. Unless there are donuts nearby. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> if you leave out the last part while your weight and bad cholesterol skyrocket, mm. your tall tale could lead to less effective treatment. You're not the first person with a donut weakness, so just tell the truth. Your doctor might help you manage your, your eating habits. Mm. Right. Then they go, I run every day. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Was another one. Tell your doctor the truth about your exercise habits. It'll help him or her figure out how to keep you healthy. So and then they have a, a whole bunch. I'll skip here because we're on the radio. Maybe I'll do it uh, as part of the podcast. It was about sex and STDs and who you're sleeping with and things like that. <laughs> but the one that's interesting is a lot of people just walk in to doctors and say, I feel great. They go in. They say, I feel great. I you feel know, great. They may go, you know. So why are they there? Right. Well, some of them go for other things, you oh, know, okay. Just like they hurt themselves maybe. or check up. Okay. Yeah, I feel great. Mm -hmm. Right. And what this, and I thought this was really important. It sounds small, but it's really important. It says, don't ignore all the little things that are bothering you mm -hmm. because they could be valuable clues to the doctor. You know, if you get headaches when you exercise, it may not seem like a big deal, but it could be a sign of something. So they're, they're saying that if you're going to talk to your doctor, you know, tell them about all the little things. It may add up to something that's, that's about to happen or you, they could prevent. Yeah, right? that's right. And the last two I have here, which are really interesting, are <clears throat> I don't do drugs. Mm -hmm. right? And this is, they're saying it's really dangerous because there's, if doctors prescribe you medication, it may react with street drugs. You know, mm -hmm. like there are things, you know, marijuana is not a big deal anymore because half the, you know, quarter of the states now are legalizing it and it, people are using it for medical. But marijuana mixed with other drugs can have real implications on your body. So if you do, and the things that most people lie about is I take my prescription medicines right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and yeah. what is the, uh, the statistic here? Half people, half of people who are chronically sick do not take their medications mm -hmm. the way they're supposed to be. Take them, right? And this could be um, 
something that's really critical to a doctor's. What was so interesting about this, between the conversation that I had with the doctor and reading this, it made me realize I often do the same thing. Yeah. You know, and I'm one of those people that actually likes to talk. Ergo, I'm on the radio. So I like to go in and, and talk about things, but there are things you're sort of embarrassed about or, you know, you're not feeling a certain way, but you don't really want to talk about it or something that we consider a little too intimate mm -hmm. to share with a doctor. But it really limits the doctor from taking care of you. So if you're out there and you're talking to your doctor, let it all out and tell the truth. Well, that's why I go to a general practitioner, and she seems to have everything on file for me now. I don't know if you have one. If yes, you go to one. I have one general practitioner, and we had that talk. Yeah. They're supposed to be the centerpiece. The centerpiece, yes. Right, of mm -hmm. everything you do. They're supposed to get every test, mm -hmm. you know, every recommendation yep. from from the other doctors. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's important. I think it's really important that we sort of, you know, and makes your doctor a better doctor. I it think. does, yeah. And, you know, you, you don't want to confuse them, believe me, when you're looking for help. All right. I got a last one because I know we've got about, uh, yeah, about uh, another minute and a half. About maybe. another minute and a half. So this story really, uh, I don't know why. I mean, I imagine I should have known something like this. There's a guy, Michael Huffman, who was in Tasmania studying chimpanzees, and he noticed one chimp named, uh, let me see, Ch Chosiku, was very sick. The chimpanzee, the chimpanzee was in her 30s, right, which is considered a chimp's prime. She, she was usually a gentle, doting mother, but one day she built a nest in a tree, climbed in and lay down, letting her infant, a male named Chopin, roam unsupervised. Another female chimp began looking after Chopin, the son, while the other one was sick. What she did do is she descended one day from the tree and she started eating some roots off of some branches. And then she lay down, went to sleep, and when she awoke, she was better, right? And it turns out by the local tribes, that is a medicine they use for upset stomachs themselves. So this is a great story about how, I wow. mean, if you ever noticed your dog eating grass? Yep when the, something's wrong with the stomach and then yeah. they throw up or, yeah, or something yeah. like that. So I thought that was uh, really interesting. Anyway, as you all know, you can always get Yakabout online, any of your social networks. Just search for Yakabout or Yakabout Tech. And of course, on all the podcasting systems. And by the way, I've been building the Twitter feed. So it's D-Yakir, D-Y-A-K-I-R. You can talk to me.